how to apply a piece of fabric to the tops of furniture, like this one here. Uh, this one, um, there was no particular reason that I did it, but it is ideal, this type of application, to apply to uh, pieces of furniture that the veneer has gone. So uh, maybe it has a big bubble in it or part of it is missing. Uh, to actually have that replaced is most probably pretty expensive. So uh, what you can do is you can cut out the bad part or re-glue it back down um, however you want and then fill in all the voids with maybe some dab, uh, spackling compound just so the surface is now smooth. I would also paint the whole surface with whatever color cottage paint that you're going to choose. Uh, as for example, on this one here, it was the Arbor Brown, uh, which picked out the color in the fabric. So I painted the whole unit with, the, with that uh, cottage paint. So it gave it a good base uh, for everything to adhere to. Okay, so uh, what we do is uh, instead of using papers or um, wallpaper, that sort of stuff, uh, these um, fabrics are great because they are about 54 inches wide and they, um, they basically you can put it on in one piece so there's no cutting and try to match it. Um, so it's, it's a very simple way of, of, of uh, applying actually to a big surface. So, so uh, the best type of material to buy is like a cotton blend. Uh, this I just picked up from a fabric store. I think it was $7 a yard so it was pretty cheap. Um, and it's a really cute print with the butterflies. <laughs> Um, so what I have done is I have, I'm going to apply it to actually to this desk. So what I did was I took the fabric, I laid it all across uh, the top of, of the desk and I've done all my painting and everything that I wanted to do on the bottom so I just gave it a quick uh, coat of, of, of a white paint on top. Uh, so then actually this color wouldn't show through here so you have to be careful that you don't want to paint like purple underneath here and then you would see it through the fabric. So you want to pick uh, that same type of color base that's on the back of the fabric. So you've cut it about an inch wider than the whole surface is around. So you can see that I've left quite a bit of area there so you can, um, you know, if you cut it a little off um, that it's not exactly square, you've got a little bit of room to play with there. Okay, so uh, once you've done that, um, you can take, I'm going to show you just with a little piece of fabric here what I've done to get to this point. So we're going to take our product called Satin Wax, uh, which is that product there, okay? Um, I take it out with a little bit of a trowel. Now um, I usually do the back part first, so I start off just by applying a few big blobs of the satin wax on the product and we're just going to actually push this into the fabric as we go here right to the edge right through so there's no uh, product really sitting up on top you just want it to go right into the fabric you're kind of filling all the uh, the empty voids in the fabric with the satin wax Okay, and then I'll just do this other edge here. Okay, and at the same time, as long as you've got like a plasticky type surface, this is just a, a dollar store type uh, tablecloth that I use. Um, I'm just going to again fill this. I still have some product left on here. So again, I'm pushing it into the fabric. So there is no milky cast sitting up on top of this. It's simply into the fabric. So then you can pick it up and uh, you can see that it's just made the fabric wet and you're going to let it dry. So you can lift it off off the surface, lie it back down and in a, a little bit you lift it up again just to make sure it's not, it, it shouldn't adhere to the surface but just make sure it's loose. Don't do it on anything like newspaper or anything like that because the newspaper will stick to it and then you'll get black marks of newsprint showing through uh, your fabric. So, okay, so we'll close that up. And then you would just let that dry. Okay, so 
Now once that's dry, it's over here. Okay, so once that has dried, it now has a, more of a texture like a piece of vinyl. So you can feel the difference, definitely, um, how this uh, has made this look. So I don't know if I would really call this tabletop worthy as of yet, um, but it's definitely getting there. So um, what I would do, we're now going to show you how to adhere this to the, the surface top. And then um, once that's done, we need to cut it. And we'll most likely apply a few more coats of varnish on top. So um, I'll just go and get the, um, the adhesive and we'll be right back. Okay, so uh, we are now back and we have got our cottage paint adhesive. Um, it's great for applying uh, this sort of application with, uh, it can do papers and stuff, but it's, it's specifically uh, good for this uh, kind of a application. <clears throat> so, What you're going to do is just take a brush and you're going to apply some to the surface just very quickly as long as you get it on there. I would work and maybe on um, this size, maybe a foot, go to the, the tabletop and then I would paint um, on the fabric as well. A little bit more absorbing on this. ability needed here, just uh, getting it on basically. Because you're putting on both sides, you don't need to put like too heavily of a, of a coat on because you do have it on both sides. paper, that's basically um, all you need to do is that. You're done. So there's no, it's so easy. It really is very, very easy. So, uh, you know, as compared to paper, um, you don't have to worry about the bumps or ripping it or anything. It just applies very nicely. We would continue with the next, the next section. So what I would do is I'd pull that back. To where the glue is and then we would apply again and, and keep rolling as, as we go along. Uh, just because the surface is fairly large, uh, you know, you want to work in sections so it doesn't dry up on you. to dry overnight so it is now good and uh, adhere to the surface uh, so all that's left to do is to cut the extra off the um, the edges so what you want to do is you're going to fold back the edge and uh, give it a good crease where you where you want to cut it to and then you're going to take whatever kind of blade that you're comfortable with uh, I like to work uh, with a with a little either a razor blade or something like that whatever you feel comfortable using it uh, has to be pretty sharp though. So then you just adhere it, I mean cut through the fabric and lean it against the edge. And as you go, just slide it along, keeping a nice even edge. And you are done. So I'm going to uh, cut this all the way around the edge and uh, we'll be back when I'm finished. Okay, so I cut all around the edge of the, of the fabric, and as I was doing it, I did notice uh, the lapping uh, part of the fabric had actually it adhered itself to the paint. So when I pulled it up, it had pulled a little bit of the paint off here and at the back. So no problem, we just take the paint, 
paint and we're just gonna touch those areas up and all better so again really easy to fix any mistakes with cottage paint not a big deal okay so I'll let that dry but while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to apply, because it's still, I can still feel the fabric here, I, I want it to be a little bit more washable. So I'm going to apply another coat of the satin wax onto the surface. So again, it's nice that it kind of fills, fills in the, in the fabric. Put it on a little bit heavier, but again, you don't want to uh, put it on too, too thick. We'll just do this and then you can keep applying coats until you get it as smooth as you want. You could actually apply a gloss varnish on top of this as well. So, uh, you know, so the choice of what you use on the top of the fabric at the very end is, is up to you, whatever you have in your arsenal. Okay, so I guess that's it. I'll finish this off and this project is pretty much done. So that's so that's the uh, end of this project, and you can see how nicely uh, this color picks out the color in the in the fabric. And I think that's uh, pretty much done. So I'll just finish completing this off. But thank you for joining us on Cottage Paint Live, and we'll see you next time.